As sin increases, the world is heading towards the judgment of God. And my friend, you and I would like to avoid that. I hope you would like to avoid that. And so we are going to pre present to you this morning a message from Revelation that will help us to understand how to escape what's coming, what is called the Great Tribulation. Good morning, this is Pete and Dorcas Masintha with you, Cornerstone Assembly in the Pen Pentecostal right here in Cambridge, Maryland. And we're also Masintha Ministries. We meet at a church called The River at 415 Academy Street right here in Cambridge. And we will have services Sunday night and Thursday night at 7 p.m. So come on out for services. Uh, this Thursday, I think we wrap up our our podcast on uh, Perpetual Truth, the subtitle being uh, Sorrow and Joy in the Christian Life. I think we wrap it up. Don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, go on with that. There's lots of joy in God's Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you want joy, too, if you have, you know, let's, let's say if, if you're, understandable you want joy amen and you don't want to face what's going to happen to the earth it's going to come and we're going to show you in revelation how you and i can escape uh, and how christians need to remain in christ i keep saying that a lot of people say oh you're okay you have to remain you'll see this directly in god's word as we look in revelation this morning and god wants you and us to escape the time that's coming upon the earth that's going to try the entire world. And so, yeah, amen. Let me just pop something else up here for you so you know where we're at on the internet. Okay, over my head. There you go. And now we want to go to our text, and we're going to go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. This time around, I have let you, I let you know here what I have changed. Uh, in this text and you say you can't do that well yes we can if we know what the greek is and so on if we study and so on and if we compare certain things and all that and there you have it uh, i'm going to read from the american king james <laughs> and in this case the american king james has said for says it should be says because the greek is present active indicative you might say why well, have to say all that it's important because the holy spirit is still speaking to us today through the book of revelation it's not just the spirit said and the exact greek is that he says to the seven churches and the seven churches to some degree you could say exist today that's another topic for another time also down below uh, given the context trial is the actual intent of the greek of verse 10 and it makes more sense too i think the american king james had temptation and i do believe uh, the king james has that too but if you look at that word in fact we talked about that i believe if i'm not mistaken this past thursday in our podcast about sorrow and joy in the christian life but we want to read for you now these verses in revelation chapter 3 verses 7 to 13 and sister dorcas begins she's in the new king james and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write these things says he who is holy he who is true he who has the key of david he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. And lest anyone misunderstand, and that they can. I'm not putting anyone down. Some people just don't know. That's Philadelphia in what was then Asia Minor, across the seas there, in what we now call Turkey. And so the Church of Philadelphia. In fact, there was two or three in the Middle East, you might say. And sometimes they get those things confused. In fact, you might hear on the news about Philadelphia on uh, close to Egypt. No, this is not close to Egypt. This is up in Turkey. All right, verse 8. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For you have a little strength, and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie, indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. And I'll move it up for you. <coughs> so we have it here. Okay, let me hit it one more time here, probably. Okay. And we now need, what, verse 9, right? Ten. 10, okay. Okay, because you have kept my word. 
or yeah, you have kept the word because you have kept the word of my patience. I will also keep you from the hour of trial. Old King James has temptation. American King James has temptation, but the word is trial. Here's particularly in this passage, which shall come upon all the world or all the earth. You can say, but as to try them that dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. There you go. All right. And him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Uh, somebody might have a question too, what's this my God stuff? Because you know, this is Jesus talking through the Holy Spirit here. And uh, they're all one and the same being. And so how can he say my God? Well, that's our connection with him. I have a whole, well, a whole, I have at least two messages on that. But one of which is called Make the Connection. And you might find that at my Sapphire Streams pages and also at archive.org. And so look for it there. And that will help you understand why Jesus is saying it this way. Why? He is the bridge between us and God who is, you could say, well, not you could, what you do say, in fact, it says he dwells in light and unapproachable light. And so he is that bridge between us and God as the Son. That's what he does. S O N. Okay, now look. On your screen to your right, you'll see a list there of different things. And we're going to see four things in this passage. And if you want to escape the Great Tribulation, pay attention to this, okay? All right, now, first of all, we look at the strength of the keepers. Now, you see, I have moved around here in this passage I'm, uh, the Holy Spirit led me to these certain areas of this passage there's four different colors on your screen uh, yellow, magenta uh, also sky blue I like sky blue and then black uh, with the lettering in either orange or yellow so the first one is the strength of the keepers and it says, you have a little strength. We're going to spend some time on this one, okay? And, and it definitely connects with the next section, too. But let me continue here. All right, now, strength, this word is dunamis, one of three words translated as strength in the New Testament. But this word here, dunamis, is more often translated as power. Amen. Power. In fact, uh, I found it interesting that the Holy Spirit chose this particular word for this passage in referring to holding fast and all as he writes to the Church of Philadelphia. I found it very interesting because this same word, dunamis, is used over in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, in regard to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry wait in the city of jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high amen power from on high praise god that's the dunamis and we could say a lot about this but this is the definite ability within the grace of god amen the ability to do his will now while i maintain it's important for all of us, if we're saved, to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit where you speak in other tongues and all. Uh, I also maintain this, that based upon other passages, that every true Christian, if you're born again, you have a level of the Holy Spirit. You might not speak in tongues, but you still, you got to have the Holy Spirit if you're saved. <laughs> that makes, it, makes complete sense, okay? And besides, there's other passages too. I have a little study on that sometime. And so, so every Christian has a level of the Holy Spirit. Now, I could use my water bottle again. I won't do that right now. But you take a glass of water. You put some water into your glass, your tumbler. Uh, but uh, you don't have a full glass till you fill it up. And then you keep uh, filling if you want till it overflows. And that's what you have with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
And so, but every Christian has a level of the Holy Spirit. Now, while dunamis is connected with miracles, it is also connected with, oh, some people don't like this word, holiness. Holiness, that's right. And one example is over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, living in holiness, without which no one will see God. And that is mentioned over in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Now, the spirit of Jesus is to reside, live, abide, remain, dwell within us. And we are, as Christians, we are to be led by the spirit, empowered by the spirit throughout our lives unto eternal life. Now, let's see what Romans says. We're going to go now to Romans chapter 8. And Sister Dorcas is going to read verses 9 to 11. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So there you have it uh, about the Holy Spirit in our lives. And uh, we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, living by the Holy Spirit. Listen to him. I'll probably say more about that shortly. But all these things are very important. Amen. Very important that uh, we permit the Holy Spirit to remain in us. Uh, we could, you say, ignore it we could forsake the holy spirit within us and then live in such a way whereby god no longer dwells with us inside of us he's still around like he says i'll never leave you nor forsake you but let me tell you right now he'll hopefully he'll be there let's put this way hopefully you'll sense that he's there in this in the sense of conviction so let me say it that way all right now going back to our text like look at that word little you have a little strength little strength and all right it, it can be an amount yes a little in amount but also think despised and i checked that word out this could very well be uh this word was used about the mustard seed and a lot of people misunderstand that and you know they say well science says that the mustard seed is not the smallest seed well, the word of God doesn't say smallest. It says the least of all seeds. So in other words, if you wanted to grow food, right, <laughs> which, you, which would you prefer to grow, lentils or mustard seed, you know, <laughs> mustard plant, okay? You could probably eat some of the mustard plant, but let me tell you right now, I'd rather have lentils <laughs> or wheat, okay? So it's the least of all seeds in that regard. But this is it, you know, uh, you have a little strength. And we're going to talk about that. Look closely on your screen there uh, about these, these words, especially when we get to the magenta. Think about the seed and this, this despised seed. Also a, like a small stone that came out of heaven in uh, Daniel chapter 2, verses 44 to 45, and smacked the statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw right on the feet and the statue was made of various things, basically gold, silver, and so on. And it smashes the, the statue on his feet, and the whole thing crumbles, and the stone becomes uh, a great mountain in all the earth. And the interpretation of that was Christ is coming. His kingdom is coming. Amen? Amen. And it's going to fill the whole earth, and you, no one can stop it. No one can stop it. That's one reason why the Great Tribulation needs to take place. Uh, because during that time, the Jews that remain, many of them will get saved. Many will get saved, and that is an objective of the Great Tribulation. But look at this passage, written to the church, the assembly over in Philadelphia. And now, think what I just said about this little part. And think about seeds and so on. Now, let's now look 
at the magenta part and let me get there too so I see it with you on the screen all right you have kept my word have kept my word and have not denied my name and then the other part is in verse 10 because you have kept my word and we'll talk more about verse 10 shortly but I want us to focus upon that word kept and uh, it means to guard to observe sometimes it's used as a metaphor to keep uh, one in the state in which she is and then also to reserve or to undergo something but it's quite often it's to observe that means obey but but also guard guard so not only are we to obey Christ's word, which is both written and spoken to our hearts directly by the Holy Spirit. I don't mean a prophet. I keep saying that. A lot of people depend upon these so-called prophets out there. And uh, so, no, it's it's not. You, it could be done that way, but this is not the main force behind it. Okay? Well, it can be done that way if the prophet is true. If your pastor, minister is teaching, preaching, it can be done that way too if what he says is true but the most sure way and the best way is the Holy Spirit speaking directly to you in your heart you might not hear audible words but you'll sense him within your heart and so you listen to him so not only are we to obey Christ's word which is written and spoken but we are to guard it from all challenges now I say written listen he's behind the whole Bible the entire Bible okay I mean he's not separate from the Holy Spirit or separate from the Father it's one God who is Father Son Holy Spirit so he it's all one God and uh, just as we are one being but we're body soul and spirit and that's what we have there but we need to guard Christ's word in such a way as to make it truly supreme above all all of what our family, friends, or whoever is in the world says, okay? Your employer, I don't care, your minister, your church, whatever. If they speak against God's word, written word, and God's spoken word to your heart, then we need to uphold God's word as supreme, amen, at all times. So, now let's talk about this keeping some more this foundational keeping and look at this look it says you have kept my word my word and that's not the word of a denomination church apostle a prophet or any man or whatever okay they have kept the church of philadelphia kept the lord's were yes back in those days there was also false prophets and false apostles just as there are today and probably people mangling the scriptures and so on uh, and, and we can go on with the whole list here but the thing is they have kept they guarded and they obeyed the word of christ to their heart and they fall through now look uh my word this is the written word also let's say incarnate word christ within you and me if we're saved and of course the word directly spoken to our heart by the holy spirit so bear that in mind and also it says you have not denied my name now his name jesus means yavah is salvation that's what it means so keep this in mind all right now look we should not deny his name in any way you know i'm not when i first read this some time back when i was first saved and thinking people come up will say deny christ deny christ and so you're put on a spot and all and so this is what it means well yeah it can mean that but it also means this okay it means that we must not deny his name in by thought or by word or by deed we must not deny his name by thought or by word or by deed 
And we are to love the Lord with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength and all. And what a lot of people do sometimes, and I probably done it to myself years back, I'm, thank God God corrects us, amen? But walking around and saying, some Christians say this, I am just a sinner saved by grace. I'll have to do a video on that sometime, okay? I'm just a sinner. No, you, if you're saved, you're saved. You were once a sinner, and now you are a child of God learning to walk in Jesus Christ. Quit saying that I'm a sinner because then you're, <laughs> it's like encouraging your flesh. Okay, I'm a sinner. I, I can't help it. I'm, here we have another one. I am only human. That's why God became human, to save us from our sins. Amen. So that's very important. So people deny the name of Christ, and they don't even know it a lot of times. And the thing is, these two things that I just mentioned to, it, it goes against the fact that you and I have responsibility in our salvation. We're not saved by our works but if someone gives me something to use, okay? If I don't use it, then what good is it? <laughs> what good is it if I don't use it? So, now let's move on here. Uh, we are not to be a broken cistern. And you can read about that over Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. You know, the Holy Spirit through Jeremiah rebuked some of the Jews because they hewn out cisterns, they, they vessels to hold water that can hold no water, okay? <laughs> and some of them are cracked. And so that's what happens. There's too many Christians, or at least we could say those that name the name of Christ, they're cracked. They take in the Spirit, and out it goes, not in ministry, but it just goes because of sin and because the person wants to live for themselves. No, Christ didn't save you to live for yourself. He saved you to live for Him. Now, let's look at verse 10. And on your screen, it's in the American King James. And uh, there it says, Because you have kept the word of my patience. Now, why are you putting the Greek up there? Because it's good to know. You see that word logos next to the word word? Okay, I have it in Greek and English, or the, the English transliteration. You know why that's important? Because when you open the Bible to the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, the Logos. And the Logos was with God, and the Logos, logos was God. And that's exactly what it says. Don't put the ah uh in there like some people do. And that's another topic for another time. But let me tell you right now, somebody will say, well, you need the, the ah in there because the definite article in the Greek is not there. That's not the way it is all the time, okay? There's, in any language, there's exceptions to the rule. And when it comes to God, uh, the definite article is not always needed. And the same way with the word for world, cosmos, it's not always needed, and there's a few more. So it's the, yeah. so there's certain groups, cults that say the awe ah should be there. Well, then, my friend, you just contradicted, contradicted Isaiah chapter 40, verses three to uh, verses 10 to 11. Isaiah 43, 10 to 11. Right now, I said that time. Isaiah 43, 10 to 11, where Jehovah, Yavah, says, there's no other God besides him. There's no God formed before him nor shall there be formed after him. <laughs> you, you can't have that in Isaiah and then have a New Testament that says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. No way. Someone's wrong here, okay? Let me go on. That's not the topic here, okay? I don't want to be sidetracked. But look, you kept my word, okay? And we don't want to be a broken cistern. I don't know how I got off on this other one. Oh, we said about the word. Yeah. Well, in the, the New King James, which Sister Dorcas would have, is uh, says, because you have kept my command to persevere. No, it should read word. Because there's other words that may be translated as command, but not this one you could say loosely, yeah. But there's no reason to translate it as command. You, you have kept the logos. You have kept Christ. 
the Christ of my patience. There you go. But what happens sometimes, and they mean well, some translators, they will make things they think easier for us. And when they do that, it's not really helping us. So they should just left it as it is. So in this case, what the old King James had stands. You have kept the word of my patience. And it's good to study these, these things, okay? So, but the Logos is there to persevere. So be that in mind. So it's not just a command, it's the ability. So he's not saying, you know, you, uh, you kept my command. You kept the ability of my patience. Got it? That's the way you should look at that verse, okay? And this connects well with what we previously said in regard to that little strength, that little power up there in the yellow, okay? That little strength, that little power. Why? Because, well, Jesus Christ was the stone that was re rejected, you know? And, well, how come we don't see him in any historical documents? We see him in a few, but, you know, not in a whole lot. Uh, we see him in the Bible, of course. Now, some people, well, that's not history. Yes, it is, okay? And the New Testament, if I'm not mistaken, is the most copied of the ancient literature yeah most copied uh, if not if not the entire bible most copied and closest to the time of its origin you study that okay uh it's closer than some other many all the other greek stuff that we got about i don't know who i don't know these guys name uh these different greek people and all that they had their books and stuff like that. Uh, Homer, I think is one. Homer. All right. So it's closer in time. In fact, there is a small piece of papyrus that uh, was found, I think, in Egypt that connects. It's a copy, of, a small copy of the, the Gospel of John, just a few phrases and verses. But it dates to the second century, the first half of the second century. In other words, John the Apostle was hardly dead <laughs> for about, you know, 30 years at the most. And here's this scrap of papyrus at all. So that, no other Greek literature is that, you know, sure. Okay. So that's amazing. And you can see that online too. Somewhere they got it up online, that little scrap of papyrus written on front and back too, by the way. So, all right, so this connects well with this little power, this little strength. And that stone in Daniel 2, you, you get this picture in Daniel 2, it's not really a big stone. It's this little stone made without heaven, uh, made without hands, coming down from heaven, striking that statue. Wow, okay. Now this word persevere, all right, uh, steadfastness, constancy, endurance. And it's characteristic of a man in the New Testament who is not swerved by his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. And it's translated as patiently, steadfastly, patient, steadfast, waiting. And it goes on with all these things, perseverance. We just hang in there with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So persevere, patience is from another word which is translated as endured and that occurs in the scripture in fact we're going to bring one up for you right now and it's uh, it's it comes from a certain word and and you'll see that over in hebrews hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 2. therefore we also since we were surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. As you see, there's that word endured in that last verse that was read, and uh, that's where we get patience from in the Word of God perseverance you might say and so that's how it's there okay so endured endure we have to endure in fact somewhere i think over in one of the gospels he who endures the end shall be saved 
I, when I first read that, I was kind of frightened by that. Oh, my. Oh, how am I going to do this? Well, you can't. You and I cannot do it unless we are born again, unless we have Christ in our heart, and we just hang on him. Amen. The Logos, the Christ, the Logos, uh, which I'll put that back up on the screen for you right now. Uh, but uh, the Logos, he will help you to persevere. Amen. He'll help you per to persevere. And there you have, once again, this in magenta. You'll see the word Logos next to the word Word. All right. So, yeah, he is him. The Logos that saves us and gives us the victory, not the rhema, the spoken word of the prophets. And that's another word for word, rhema. There's at least two words for word in the Greek. Logos and rhema. So it's not the spoken word of the prophets or the so-called prophets. Got it? All right. So now we get to the next one, which is in sky blue. I love sky blue. <laughs> Love the sky. Amen. I will also keep you from, and it says the hour of the trial. But let's focus upon those words. I will also keep you from. From. Keep is the same as we mentioned before. Okay, guard. He'll guard us. Amen. And so he'll protect us. So he'll keep us from the hour of trial. Get it? The keepers will be kept by the keeper. Right, he'll keep us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. From the hour, now we'll talk, you know, well, it's, it's, a, relatively, it's, it's a relatively short time period. It compared, it's like people talk about the Great Tribulation period, and when I was first saved, I heard it was seven. And then the other possibility is three and a half years, which is makes more sense, you could say. And I don't have time to explain that. But that doesn't matter. <laughs> it does not matter. The Word of God says the hour, so it's a short time compared to the period of grace and the, the age of the church that we just, we're just we going through right now. It's a short time compared to the period of the law uh, when Israel is supposed to be the uh, the main focal point to bring people to God. So it's you know the great tribulation period is going, thank God, it's going to be short. Okay? But it's going to be horrible. It's going to be horrible. So but there's this trial, the testing. Uh, uh, so the hour of trial, some translations might have temptation. Once again, throw that out. Uh, the word, throw the word temptation out. It means trial, testing, same word here, an experiment, attempt, trial, approving. God's proving people. Okay. And if you read Revelation very carefully, he still gives people opportunity to get saved. Now, I'm not saying wait for the Great Tribulation because you may not be around anyhow. You can die before that, okay? And if you don't, listen, you need to get saved now and get the strength, okay? <laughs> get the strength. All right, well, keep you from the trial, the testing. Now, there's two main areas of thought on this, okay? Now, uh, when I was first saved, I believed in what's called mid-tribulation. We're not going to talk about all this, the mid-tribulation rapture. But there is the rapture of the church, whereby we are removed from the world that we're saved, and people say, no, that doesn't happen. Well, explain then what is First Thessalonians chapter 4. <laughs> right? Explain that, okay? I don't, I don't know why they say, no, it's not going to happen. In fact, I even see it in some cases in the Old Testament, but that's just me. <laughs> but anyhow, they go over Zephaniah. He's going to hide us. All right now, well, yeah, it could be done that way by removing us from the earth. It could be done that way, or it, we would be here and be protected from the wrath of God during the Great Tribulation. In other words, we won't be protected from the wrath of man, but we will be protected from the wrath of God. Now, either one of those is a possibility, and those that believe that latter one, they believe probably in post-trip. You know, at the end of tribulation period, we're taken to heaven. You know, and. But anyhow, it makes more sense to me, in my opinion, that it happens before the Great Trip. Or if you want to use a seven-year marker, mid-trip, whatever. Okay, it doesn't matter. The fact is what? Be ready. Yeah, be ready. And be a keeper. Keep God's word. Guard it. Not just obey it, but guard it. Someone says the Bible's not true. Tell them, oh, yes, it is. I believe God's word over what you say. <laughs> Oh, the Bible was written by man. That's what they say. No, the Word of God is clear. It's written by the Holy Spirit. And there's no other book like it. 
And once again, I should do a video on that one too. Uh, where it says all these things, points that out. And also we have examples in real life of how powerful God's word is. Amen. See it all the time, all the time. Uh, if you can ever hang out with the Gideons and go to one of their banquets, whatever, you know, if you, they, they, they will do that for pastors and all that. You'll have, hear these powerful testimonies of how God changes people with his word. All right. Now, look, it says, I also will keep you. This I is Jesus. He will guard us either way, either with the rapture or while we're here. Uh, he protects us from the wrath of the Father. And all so he protects us look he's always faithful amen and like he'll never leave or forsake true disciples true disciples and true disciples will endeavor to remain in him but if they forsake him then they walk away but only those who do not forsake him remain as his true disciples you and i have responsibility now the last one is the crushed it says the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth or on the in the world now there's all sorts of description about this it's, it shall come like a night you might say the night comes when no man shall work it comes as a snare and this is what some people <laughs> need to understand. All right. It comes like a snare. God has warned us throughout God's word. It's mentioned over in Isaiah. Jesus used the same terminology. There's a snare that's coming upon the face of the earth. Now, I have a video up there on YouTube that was made some time back. So we're not on it. We don't show up on it. And you might say, thank God, I don't have to look at you. <laughs> but uh, you'll find a link for it over at that uh, URL I just put up, sapphirestreams.com forward slash live forward slash audio M. You capitalize the M dot HTML. Ash mark, capital M175. And I'll take your right to where that link is at you click on the link i do that that way i could say youtube and all that but they might change the url or they might take it down so i had to put it up again somewhere right so i do it this way I, I bring you to my sapphire streams pages so i try to keep those links current at all times so but uh listen to that message it's the snare and ap apocalyptic warning and you'll have it there amen but it's going to come as a time of great trouble. In fact, there's another message I had up there about uh, tornado warning from God. That's another one too. So it's described as a whirlwind in God's word. And so be careful. Amen. It is coming. It is coming. Amen. It's coming. And nothing will stop it. Uh, it shall come as trouble, great trouble, great tribulation on those who dwell on the earth of the world uh, either way you can say it but where's your dwelling at where, think about it. where's your dwelling where, this has been recorded in 2024 people are really you know it's good that citizens of the united states they, they take an interest in voting that's good but if you're saved your primary citizenship is in heaven <laughs> bear that in mind amen all right if we are truly saved okay our citizenship is in heaven. That's Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. And if we're truly saved, we are children of the day, not of the night. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Read that very carefully. Look at the pronouns very carefully in there. And if we're saved, we are aware of the snare. That's another message. Aware of the snare. <laughs> Be aware of the snare. <laughs> oh. And we dwell here as citizens of heaven, as it says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, and not of earth. So as you see, we, you know, we, you have kept my word. You have not denied my name. We have responsibility, amen, to keep his word, the written word, incarnate, spoken, and not deny the name of the Lord. And <laughs> not deny the name of the Lord. Amen. And if we do so, 
will be spared. And this is why Jesus says over in Luke 21, verse 36, the following. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Once again, going back probably over 50 years when I first got saved, read that. Lord, how am I going to do that? That's good to ask that. Lord, how am I going to do it? The answer is you and I can't. We need the logos. The logos of his patience, his perseverance, his endurance in our lives. So we can't do it on our own. We need him. But we have to take responsibility to follow through. To obey the written word. To obey the spoken word. So the only way to be counted worthy is to be in Christ and remain in him. Being empowered and directed by God's Holy Spirit. Amen. To lovely obey the Father. If you're saved, hang in there with Christ. Don't listen to stuff that you're okay. And I'm not saying worry about your salvation, but what I'm saying is take responsibility. If you really love the Lord, you will want to grow in Him and you will want to do more for Him. You will want to have more of the fruit of God's Holy Spirit in your life. And so you'll want that if you really, truly love the Lord. Amen. And so determine that you are going to be a keeper of the Logos, the Word, Christ, and you're going to keep Him there and follow His written Word and His spoken Word to your heart. And you'll be blessed, my friend. You'll be blessed. Amen. And friend, if you're not saved, once again, you cannot do all this on your own you just can't you need jesus christ as your savior he comes in as that logos that seed it says that he's a seed you know seed of christ over in i think first john chapter three peter used the same terminology just a slightly different word and that's even more powerful i said it at least once or twice on the video and people might be shocked he said that yeah Yep, he did, by the Holy Spirit. Amen. But listen, Christ wants to come in and remain in you. And he wants you to be with him. He doesn't want to damn you. He doesn't want you to face the great tribulation. And so we encourage you to come in. And even right now, you know, let's say that it doesn't happen for another 50 years. You know. But uh, but the thing is, you can live for Christ now and have a better life and have a, a really life that's rewarding here and for all eternity so we encourage you to come to christ if you'd like to do so please pray this prayer amen father forgive me i am a sinner i ask christ to come in to be my king to be the lord of my life to save me from my sin to cleanse me and i ask you lord to live in me and through me every moment of my life help me lord to live for you and this I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As always, if you're saved, we have recording titles 7, Roots for Growth of Christ. And you'll find a link for that at my Sapphire Streams pages and my various pages I have up. Not on every page, but you'll find it there. And so, but it's also at archive.org. And you go there and you write, type in the word 7. Roots for Growth in Christ, my last name, Macinta, M-A-C-I-N-T-A, and it should come up for you. And then we also have a series of studies, Basic Elements of Christianity at sapphirestreams.com forward slash B-E-C forward slash all lowercase letters. And take those lessons are free. And no matter what language you speak, if Google Translate supports it, it will translate it for you. Amen. The only thing is you must take the quizzes in English. Amen. If your device says this, this is not secure, yes, it is. Click the link. You're fine. Uh, but the thing is, we don't really have to have it, but we got it. We do have one. Amen. But some devices, they say this, this is not secure. It is. And don't worry about that. You know, that's only like if you're making credit card transactions, whatever, things like that. Uh, so don't worry about that at all. 
So not every website really, really needs that, but that's, anyhow, that's something that some people came up with some time back, and we're stuck with it. <laughs> Let's go to prayer now, and the first prayer request is from Central Asia. In late 2023, unidentified citizens in a nation with a large Muslim population recorded a Christian worship gathering and then posted it online. Several women at the church service were converts, converts to the faith and were worshiping without their Muslim husband's knowledge. When no news that the women were attending church spread in the community, a mob gathered and threatened the church's pastor and its members. Though no one was hurt, several families who attended the church are now harshly ostracized. Customers uh, boycott their businesses and the Christian families struggle financially, but they are still meeting every Sunday, reported a frontline worker. They are also connected to a church network that is very spiritually alive and supportive. Jesus, I thank you that these individuals weren't hurt when they were attacked or when they were found out. I just thank you that uh, the those that uh, were converted, that they wanted to attend your church services. Lord, I pray that you might help their husbands also to become uh, born again, that they might receive you as their personal Savior. Lord, I pray that you might uh, continue being with uh, the church as they meet pray that you might protect them and keep them safe, but I pray that you might help them to see even more people saved through their ministry. This we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. China, we've had this before, but I'm going to do it every now and then. Since two leaders of the Ganquan Church were arrested last fall, their families have pleaded for their release. Those pleas have grown more urgent after the two leaders developed health problems in prison. Pastor Zhao is suffering from an unspecified serious illness that his doctors say cannot be properly treated in prison, while Elder Ding is facing high blood pressure, chest pain, dizziness, and insomnia. In other news regarding China, Pastor Li Hunkai in Henan Province, China, is serving a five-and-a-half-year prison sentence after protesting the government's attempts to remove a cross from the top of his church in 2019. Pray for the miraculous healing of Pastor Zhao and Elder Zheng, and that Pastor Li Junkai would be encouraged, empowered, and directed by the Holy Spirit. Pray for their immediate release from prison and pray for their guards and fellow inmates to come to know Christ through their testimony. Father, do pray for the guards and inmates that you soften their hearts, draw them to. We pray that as this is handled in the court systems, that the judges will just get these men out of prison. We pray that you encourage them by the Holy Spirit and empower them by the Holy Spirit. Help the Father listen to the Holy Spirit and follow through. Touch your bodies too, those who are sick. We ask, O oh God, that you touch them with the Father and heal them, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for viewing. Come back next time, or I'll tell you, this. there'll probably be a sequel to this because we'll probably go back to chapter 3. Uh, it's important. We're going to talk about the powers of the keepers. The powers of the keepers, amen. So unless God says don't do it, I will do it. And so God willing, that's next time around. But in the meantime... You have a good day in Jesus Christ. Go with him, my friend. Praise God. You who dwell in the gardens, the companions, listen for your voice. Let me hear it. Maranatha. Maranatha.